guys, Jessica here, the Ferry Family Coach. Thank you so much for being here with me in this video. Today we are going to be talking about the five keys to focus on when working with a dog, dog, reactive dog. Did I say dog too many times? A dog who's reactive to other dogs. Yeah, I think I had said dog too many times. Anyway, we're going to be talking about the five keys to working with a dog, reactive dog. So stick with me in this video while we cover these five keys. All right, really quick before we get started, if you haven't already, look right down there at that subscribe button. If it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like the content. I would really appreciate it. And it helps YouTube understand that I put out a good video and that this is the kind of video that you like. All right, so let's get right into the five things to focus on if you are working with a dog, dog, no, a dog, reactive dog. I'm saying dog too many times. Okay, so if you have a dog that is reactive to other dogs, I, I do, and uh, Kim is reactive to other dogs, and this is something that we work on and we manage. With COVID, it has been really hard to work on this um, because people aren't outside as much as they used to be and even though they're walking their dogs they stay really far away from you which is good for a reactive dog but it doesn't always lend to getting getting working on getting closer right so we can stay away we can maintain and manage that reactivity in our dog but when we need to work on getting closer it it hasn't been as good for that because people want to stay far away from each other which is totally fine i understand it but it, I know for me, it has kind of pushed us back and, and where we have been going previously, where we were trying to get closer and closer and closer without hitting a threshold uh, for my dog or for any dog that I previously worked with because also with COVID, um, I haven't been able to work in people's homes as much. So uh, working on getting getting that reactive dog closer to another dog without hitting and going over their threshold um, ha has been has been a difficult thing to do because people want to stay so far away from each other. Again, totally understand it, but it has pushed things back. So here are the things that we really do want to keep in mind and focus on when we are training with or just going out walking with a reactive dog. So just like with any other behavior, but we're specifically talking about dog reactivity, um, especially reactivity towards other dogs. Dogs need guidance and do dogs need patience along with guidance. Um, just like it, you know, parents teach their children how to act in public, this is the same thing that we are trying to do with our dogs. And like I just mentioned, it, it can be very difficult to find a dog owner who is willing to let other dogs who are reactive around their dog. Even with a trained professional trainer, uh, you know, working with that dog and knowing that, you know, we are working on reactivity, we are working on improving this behavior, it can be really difficult to find other dog parents who are willing to let their dog in a situation like that, which I completely understand. Um, so it does make working on overcoming that reactivity uh, for your dog a little bit more difficult, but understand that your dog needs guidance. And a lot of times your dog just doesn't know how to react to other dogs because they were never taught how to properly react to other dogs, how to react to strangers and strange dogs. So understand one, that your dog needs guidance and a lot of patience while you are teaching your dog the appropriate ways to interact with other people and other dogs. All right, so the second key that we need to talk about when working with a dog um, that has reactivity towards other dogs, or I mean really any dog, praise. Praising your dog is something so many people overlook. You are probably very quick to tell them no and offer a correction when they've done something you don't want, but how often do you actually praise your dog? Remember that anything that we praise, anything that we reward with our dog is something, it's gonna ingrain in their brain that that's a good thing to do. So we need to 
realize that rewarding and praising the behavior that we want to see in our dog, and it doesn't always have to be treats. It can just be a good boy or a good girl or pets. Um, I mean, anything like that, any positive interaction with your dog is considered praise, is considered a reward, and your dog seeks that out. So especially if we're working on reactivity. If your dog is in a situation where they are not being reactive, reward that. Or if you're in a situation where your dog is being a lot less reactive than they normally would be, reward that. Praise your dog for that because anything that we praise, anything that we reward, our dog is going to continue to do and be more apt to perform that behavior again in the future. Okay, so the third key here is, especially when working with dog, reactive dogs, you may actually want to leave the treats at home. And this is completely different from anything else we train, anything else we teach, because while your dog loves treats and they are an amazing reward, other dogs also love treats. And if you pull out a treat, if you pull out some sort of food reward and another dog sees it or smells it, and th if that other dog, you have no idea how well trained or behaved any other dog around you is, if another dog comes running over to you because they want that treat and they come running over to you for that treat, they're also running towards your dog, that reactivity, it, I mean, for your dog, that is like worst case scenario. You don't want that to happen. So unless you are a trained professional, dogs are individuals and can be unpredictable. And so we always wanna keep that in mind that dogs can be unpredictable. So it may very well be a, a good thing for you to leave the food rewards or the treats at home when working on reactivity with your dog because you don't want another dog bum rushing you to get those treats, which is going to make your dog's reactivity flare up and go crazy and reinforce probably why your dog is being reactive in the first place. That is not something we want to do. All right, the fourth key on working with reactive dogs is to keep their attention on you. So for example, if you're out walking and there's nobody around, everything's going great, you and your dog are walking wonderfully together, and all of a sudden, a dog, hopefully with their owner, turns the corner and y'all are headed right towards each other. Now, you know that this is a situation in which your dog is likely to behave in a way that their their reactivity starts to show, right? They're going to they're going to at some point hit their threshold. They don't want to get any closer to that dog. They're scared, they're anxious, whatever it is that's going on in your dog's mind that leads them to react to another dog coming towards them. You don't want to do this. So as soon as you notice another dog coming towards you, something that is going to trigger your dog's reactivity, rein in their focus on you. Step to the side get them to look at you, have a, a toy with you. Rope toys are really good in this situation, but really you wanna have whatever kind of toy your dog prefers to play with and really likes. I know my dog really loves squeaky toys. So have, but though I will say, squeaky toys can, if you squeak them, can get the attention of another dog very much like treats do so be very careful in that situation which is why i say rope toys work really well in in this type of situation get your dog to focus on you get your dog to look at you get your dog's attention and redirect it to a toy until the other dog passes reward when the dog passes and your dog doesn't react which leads us into number five the fifth key of working with a dog reactive dog give them the reward which i just said you're going to give them the reward which is to give them the rope toy the tug toy or whatever toy it was after the dog has passed so once the other dog has passed you're going to provide your dog with that reward that you were luring them with to keep their attention while the dog passed and a tug toy or a rope toy is ideal in this situation again because it's not likely to gain the attention of any other dog around so again once the other dog passes your dog has successfully can remain focused on you that whole time that's called stimulus blocking by the way we are blocking your dog from that stimulus that would normally cause them to react 
we don't want them to react. When they don't react, we do give them the reward, which in this case should be some sort of toy. A tug toy, rope toy would be ideal in this situation. Give them the reward, which is the toy. And now a lot of dogs like balls, but you don't want to, your dog chasing after something. And also balls can get the attention of other dogs. So that's why I say generally a tug toy, rope toy is going to be one of the best uh, toys that you can use to help train your dog who is reactive to other dogs. So those are the five keys to focus on when working and training a dog reactive dog. See, I didn't say dog too many times there. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for being here with me today in this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. These five keys, if you have a reactive dog, are going to really make or break your training progress. So I hope you took notes, wrote them down, uh, bookmark this video, come back to it if you need a refresher on what those five keys are. If you have any other questions, please make sure to comment down below or if you just have comments uh, or questions about this video, questions not about this video but about your pets, all of it's welcome. Post those comments down below in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, look right down there at that subscribe button. If it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications, that way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, make sure you check the description box down below. The description of this video contains a bunch of links that I really quickly want to go over with you. Um, the first being to the Beginner Dog Training Series, which is a playlist right here on YouTube. I highly recommend every pet parent check that out and go through those trainings with your dog. You're going to see drastic improvements on the bond and the relationship and the effectiveness of training on your dog. Also, my ebook. You can get a digital copy of my book. So inexpensive. It covers my seven canine commandments, which I go over first and foremost with every single one of my in-home training clients. I highly recommend that. It's incredibly inexpensive. That link is also down below. You can also check out my Amazon storefront. Now, my Amazon storefront, I have personally handpicked and curated my favorite items that are available on Amazon for your pet. These are going to be organic items. These are going to be U.S. made items. These are going to be my favorite uh, items for you and your pet. There are some cat items in there as well, but it is mostly geared towards dogs. So I hope you check that out and find something you and your dog love. Um, and of course, there is also a link to my online video training course, which you can uh, enroll in. It's all online. It is all video training, a lot of training that I recorded between me and uh, in-home clients, uh, videos similar to this as well, where you can take the principles that I'm giving you and apply them to you and your dog and your situation. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Again, if you have any other questions or comments, post them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for being here with me today, and I appreciate you for being here. I will see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.